G'day and welcome to Express Lane, a podcast for small business owners and franchisors to better navigate the trials and tribulations of growing a successful company. It isn't easy, but the rewards are definitely worth it. So Express Lane is bringing you industry leaders who share their wisdom and give you support in kicking your small business goals this year. To continue on with our talk on franchising from our first episode, where we started to discuss franchising your business as a long-term growth strategy, I've asked Marcel Lau uh, to rejoin us on this episode to explain the concept and go into a little more detail. Marcel, thanks for coming back on. It's great to be with you again, James. So Marcel, I'm a business owner and I want to grow my business. I've come up with a concept, I've taken it so far, and now I want to grow that. How can franchising help me do that and what would my first step be? Well, the first step is certainly to be involved with the FCA, to attend some of their events, particularly their main convention as well, and just to learn about franchising uh, as, as an option. Right, because you're at that crossroads and you've got an opportunity to grow it organically yourself uh, or to go into franchising. And there are absolute benefits of doing, of doing both. Um, you have to also ask yourself as a business owner, how much would you like to give away in terms of control and in terms of investment as well? If you're able to do it yourself, obviously you keep that uh, the revenue and the profits for for yourself and you keep that within the business in in franchising um, you will have to forego some of that having said that also franchising provides a wonderful platform in which to expand your business more rapidly than what you'd be able to do uh, on your own uh, with your own uh, resources whether that be financial or otherwise it it really is uh, something that needs to be looked at quite carefully in terms of what your long-term outlook is, and what your time frames are, how important those time frames are uh, as well. Okay, so you mentioned um, you know, being involved with the Franchise Council of Australia, attending events, learning a little bit about the sector and about the model itself. Um, you've touched on you know, the willingness to um, relinquish a little bit of control and potentially sharing a little bit of revenue with the franchisee, but the upside is obviously the scalability and the ability to do that fairly rapidly. What other considerations should a business owner take on board when looking at franchising as a growth model? The, the biggest thing in any franchise system is that it's not set and forget. So you can't just go into franchising and then not provide the support services afterwards to support your franchisees. So you have to take that into account and there has to be a level of upfront investment uh, in staff, uh, certainly in your systems and in the processes that you put in place to ensure that you can support those franchisees and more importantly, you can support those franchisees as your franchise network grows. You have to be scalable, uh, certainly in your planning and then in your implementation. What you do has to be scalable as well. So the support services, whether it's from a field services, field managers, business coaching, the finance related services that you're providing, and then the franchise support center. So very similar to what we've got um, at Inexpress, any other franchise system would have to look at those very, very closely. And you have to be willing as an owner, uh, if you're gonna go down that franchising model, that it's not a set and forget uh, mindset. Um, that you're going to have to invest that time up front particularly to set up those foundations for supporting the franchise network. I think it's really good advice. That structure that supports the network is so important and it's, it can be quite a significant uh, investment. So, um, But then again, quite rewarding and rewarding for those that, that stick with it. Is there an ideal number of franchises uh, for a network? I guess it would depend a little bit on, on the network, but is there a, a number before a business owner could say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm actually you know, I'm successful in franchising now? Because I'd guess there'd be some growing pains there for them initially. I think it, it certainly depends on the industry um, that you're in, and you have to look at the market opportunity. So you certainly don't want to have a, a a large franchise network, depending on what your business is, and you saturate um, the market and each of the franchisees don't have an opportunity to be profitable. And I think that's the biggest thing is your the success of the franchisees equals the success of the franchisor. It's not just about revenue growth, it's about profitable revenue growth. There, there is no set number providing you can meet that criteria and as a franchisor you are willing to invest in the resources to help your franchisees and they're continuing to grow 
and to be profitable as well, then there isn't a limit. If you're reaching a point of saturation, you'll know about it because it will start to impact those figures uh, as well. So you have to be willing to do that. And one of the other things, James, I didn't mention before is as a founder, if you are of a franchise system or the owner of the franchise system, you have to wear multiple hats, particularly in the early, early stages. There's a number of things. You're going to be the GM, you're going to be the finance manager, you're going to be the operations manager, you're going to be the franchise development manager, you're going to be all of those things. And you have to wear those those different hats as you're building up your system as well. But just to go back to your original question, there is no set number, um, but you have to make sure you're willing to support and bring on staff as your network grows. That's certainly one of the things uh, that has to be in place uh, exponentially as you grow your network. I think you touched on a really good point there, just to round out that particular discussion. The success of the franchisee means success to the franchisor, and I think it's an important point to reiterate, as well as uh, the continuing uh, requirement and desire to reinvest in the success of the network, to reinvest in the solution, to reinvest in the franchisees and the support that you provide. Yeah, and I think one of the other things is to use your existing franchisees as you build that network and you've got good franchisees because people that come into franchising and uh, who, who purchase a franchise have come from all different backgrounds and, and have a, a variety of skills and experience to bring to the table. Um, so they can be very effective, particularly in the early stages of your franchise system, to use that with that peer-to-peer engagement and to use them effectively. Um, we've seen that in our business over the years as well with great franchisees who have been able to help and give back to the rest of the franchise network, sometimes in an an informal capacity, sometimes on a consulting basis to to actually help, uh, whether it's through coaching and mentoring and other things as well. So if you can leverage and harness the skill set within your franchise base and your franchise network, um, again, you've got a great chance of uh, being successful and uh, growing the network successfully. And is it common in franchising generally for a franchisee to move into, say, a head office support role uh, and maintain ownership of their franchise? Yeah, definitely. I think it's very difficult and you can't have a hands-on involvement in your franchise uh, unit and have a full-time head office role. Um, mm. that, that's for sure. Mm. But if you've got ownership in that and you've then built that up, you've got an effective GM and other staff in your franchise um, there to run that, then those people are are often excellent fit for for a variety of different head office roles, as we've discovered as well, um, because they've got so much experience to bring to the table and to go and help other franchisees. But to operate both, certainly in my experience, I feel that that's quite difficult. You can't have a hands-on involvement in both as a franchisee and a franchisor. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it, it's generally one or the other, but you can certainly still have your ownership or investment in that, uh, in that franchise unit, yes. The knowledge they would bring to the head office would be, um, would be um, very beneficial to the head office. So, and I think for a founder to consider mm. that as they grow, mm. you know, they're not on their own, they're not having to bring in you know, new resources all the time. Generally speaking, uh, within a franchise system, franchisees will come along for the ride, especially those earlier franchises, and then help support that growth for any founder who has set up a franchise model. Um, I think there's well. a there's a maturity level with uh, with franchisees as well as they go on and they become quite successful, very profitable. They're doing well. Uh, it's it's almost like a cycle or an evolution, and and I see it a lot in franchising where they want to start to give back to the rest of the franchisees, to newer franchisees as well. And and that's not necessarily financially driven or financially motivated. It's something that just comes with with experience, being successful and wanting others to be successful uh, as well. And certainly again, something that we've seen at InExpress that we're very lucky and fortunate to be able to uh, leverage off with uh, some of our older and more successful franchisees as well. I'm going to put myself in another scenario again. So I, I'm, I'm a founder of a business. I've decided to franchise it. I've spoken to the FCA. I understand it. I've said, that's great. And I've gone and I've brought on my first 20 or 30 franchisees. I've got some of them helping me in the head office and help deliver the support and the right support to the network. So how do you transition from the 20 or 30 franchises to the next level? Well, I've actually seen a number of franchise systems in my time either plateau or just surge ahead to the next level. So it's that critical point 
in a franchise system, whether it be at 10 franchisees, 20 franchisees, 30, whatever the number might be, depending on the industry, to see at what point they go to that next level. One of the things that's really important as part of your planning and as you have a look at the revenue that's coming in and the profitability of your business is to look at reinvestment. What are you as an owner willing to reinvest back into the franchise system to take it to the next level? You're starting to systemize more and more at this point and you're looking at the systems you're looking at the resources that you've got in place. So it, 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 it's a reinvestment question. You've also got to have a look from a, a timing perspective, what your outlook is as well, and, and having a look at where do you want to take it to exactly and having a very clear plan in place. But there's a level of reinvestment that's critical there. And when you say systemizing, you're talking about systemizing from a franchising perspective, from a franchise system perspective, not so much a software system perspective. It can be both. It, it, in a particular industry, if you're doing something and it's a paper-based model or it's something that's online that could be done more effectively through a software platform, for example, there's a level of investment there. It might even be from a CRM perspective. It could be from other systems as well. Are you willing to go and reinvest that $100,000 or that $300,000, whatever it might be, and it might put you back as a franchisor in terms of your profitability for the next couple of years, but it is gonna help you to take you to that next level. That's the sort of decisions that you've got to, you've got to have a look at what you're willing to do. And you can't go in there with it just half-hearted, you have to be fully in there if you're going to do that. And it's the same consideration whether you're doing that in-country or whether you're looking to go internationally as well. And I guess one thing that we always talk about at InExpress anyway to our franchisees when they're looking to to build a business is their exit strategy. How would I go about it? I've come all this way now. I've actually I've actually systemized. I've gone to the, the next level. I've globalized a little bit. I've gone into some, some new markets. What should I be considering uh, with my business to prepare it for an exit? Well, it comes down to personnel. And, and even just prior to getting to that point, you're starting to bring in expertise into your business as a franchisor because more often than not, you do not have all the skills that are necessary. So whether that's bringing in an effective CFO into the business where you've worn the finance manager hat for a while yourself to bring in that level of expertise with a CFO or you're bringing in a CMO from a marketing perspective, CO from an operations perspective, whatever it might be, again, it requires a level of investment um, a salary to somebody new that you're bringing in to take it to that level. And that forms also later on part of your exit strategy as well, because you have to have those effective, um, those, those people, those very highly skilled personnel, particularly at a leadership level in place in there. Because anybody who's looking to buy your franchise system, and if you're looking to exit down the track as the franchise, or they're gonna look for that expertise. If it's all the knowledge, all the skills and all the experience is held just with one person, that's uh, that's not gonna be attractive to an investor or a buyer for that franchise system. So you need to have a number of key people uh, in place and that process starts well before as part of that planning. How far before would you sort of, or have you seen uh, with other networks you've been involved in? Five, five to 10 years, yep. um, I, I would say as a, uh, as a minimum. And I suppose that looking at that, it, it never ends. It, it's not something that you just do once. It's something that you have to do as part of your yearly it's business a planning. Evolution. Yeah, absolutely. You need to be doing that as a minimum uh, annually as part of your uh, business planning to look at where the gaps are uh, in your business with the skills that you've got there as a franchise mm. or mm. Uh, and what you need to fill to achieve those future goals. Yeah. I mean, some of the key themes I take away from this uh, is continued reinvestment um, and that ultimately under the franchise model can support with the right investment and the right service offering can support an exponential growth opportunity for an entrepreneur who wants to take their business down the franchising path. Yeah, definitely. And, and, it, and it never ends. James, Inexpress is 21 years old and our decisions are still based on looking at reinvestment, investing ahead of the curve in terms of our people, our processes, our system upgrades and things like that, where we still, even now as a very mature global organisation that we are, we're still having to do that ourselves. And it doesn't matter where you are what size franchise network you are, you've got to have a look at where that reinvestment can, uh, can occur 
to keep taking it to the next level. I think that's really good advice for everybody and um, I hope that's been beneficial uh, to business owners, to to anyone considering uh, entering the franchise industry as a franchisee or, or investing in a system or partnering with a system, that franchising is in fact quite a, an attractive and successful uh, model for people to um, create their own wealth. All right, Marcel, thank you very much for your time. I know you're very busy. We very much appreciate it and we look forward to catching up with you in future podcasts as we continue through the year. It's my pleasure, James. Thank you. It's been enjoyable speaking to you as well. I'm James Buck. Thank you for listening to Express Lane. Don't miss any of our small business insights by subscribing to the Express Lane podcast on your favourite podcast platform or connect with InExpress Australia and New Zealand on Facebook and LinkedIn. And for anyone keen to join our global InExpress franchise network or to learn more about our services, visit our website inexpress.com. Stay safe and catch you next time.